Jingle, jingle, here come the holidays, you know, Santa and stress. And so we asked psychologist and author, Dr. Molly Barrow, for a few minutes on the Morning Blend couch. Dr. Barrow has appeared in O Magazine, also the New York Times. Uh, she's been a guest expert on TV and radio talk shows. She knows what she talks about. Good morning, Dr. Barrow. Good morning, Bill. How are you? I, I'm good. I love the holidays, but for many people, the holidays are the worst days. What causes all this holiday stress and at this mm. point, the anticipation of the stress? Oh, it's very difficult because you have a picture in your mind of what a wonderful holiday is. It may resemble a, a picture postcard of the sleigh in the snow, and it involves certain people playing certain roles. And unfortunately, as you have your children grow up, they have their own families, they have their own children, um, they may prefer to stay home and not fight traffic and, and weather. And there you are sitting home alone, or your holiday feels ruined because they can't make it down, or you feel alone, or you've lost a spouse. And there are a lot of reasons why your holiday could feel like it's not going to be something special. And what we want to do today is tell people how to make that holiday special, even if those circumstances aren't perfect. Well, some circumstances we can't control, obviously right. deaths of loved ones, right. uh, friends, family. But if you set yourself up for a Hallmark, a Courier and Ives picture-perfect <laughs> holiday, then you may be uh, You're allowing in disappointment You're... to come right in the front door with Santa Claus That's right. down the chimney, I should That's say. That's right, Bill. You're, you're really in trouble. And it's those expectations that make you put pressure on the very people that you want to enjoy the holidays with. So what we want to do is pull off of that pressure. If, for instance, your children cannot make it down for the holiday, there are many times where you can move the holiday to a different date. When the grandchildren can arrive, you can have a little mini Christmas or mini Hanukkah at that point. Yeah. You don't have to have it right on that date. And especially if you are uh, begging or putting pressure on somebody to fulfill your desires and your wishes, you're going to ruin their holiday and make them feel guilty. They may show up, but they're not going to be happy. And that's not going to do anyone any good. So what we want to do is take that holiday and make it something special. First of all, get yourself a present that you love, that you really desire, that you want. Make okay. sure that you get something you like. <laughs> Second of all, think about, okay, if this is not going to be the holiday of my dreams, is there someone in my neighborhood that's alone? Is there an organization that could really appreciate you handing out gifts to children in the hospital or, or some kind of service? that you could do this Christmas. And then have Christmas on February 15th. Who cares? You know, when the kids can arrive or when or when the grandchildren are free. You know, and being flexible and not rigid is what's really key here. And you know, it kind of goes back to the old cliche, it is better to give than to receive. Now, I was thinking about that picture-perfect holiday. For some people, the, the holiday without family, that would be picture-perfect, <laughs> which uh, leads me to my next question about why do families always get into it and you have all these squabbles during the holidays? All the, again, it's the idea that they're going to receive their, their picture of what they think this holiday should be, and disappointment occurs again and again. And then if you add alcohol, which is a depressant, we can get people that are really emotional and really depressed during the holidays when they're trying to celebrate and they actually go the wrong direction with, you know, a few martinis too many. Uh-huh. We know how that is. All right, back to the gift giving. Uh, buy yourself a gift. Mm -hmm. Hope you don't pick the wrong size for yourself. <laughs> Again, that would be the Hollywood holiday. Why is the whole gift giving ordeal such an ordeal? It, it should be pleasurable, but I see a lot of misery at the malls, don't you? <laughs> One thing is people wait too long. If it's Halloween, you should be thinking already about Christmas and, and the Hanukkah and making those holiday special gifts because if you want it to be monogrammed, if you want it to be uh, engraved, that takes time. And if you're ordering it from somewhere, there's always delays during the holiday. So that's an issue is that you really need to avoid that last minute shopping. And that goes out to all you men that shop on Christmas Eve, oh, yeah. you know, that's dangerous. And the other thing is prioritizing because there are so many people that at the last minute you think, oh, I should get a gift uh, for that person. You really need to prioritize your spouse 
and your children and then maybe the nephews and nieces get a little dollar gift because that's all that's left and you want to be careful because if you go out and buy your buddy a very expensive gift or uh, your child a very expensive gift your spouse may not say anything but they're going to be hurt all year long so you want to make sure that your spouse gets the majority of effort and thought and perhaps money in their gift. Okay. You mentioned uh, if you're uh, home alone for the holidays, yeah. got a few seconds left, you know, go out and visit with somebody else. Some people would love to be home alone. Some people will feel lost and forgotten and the, the butt of the Christmas joke, uh, the Hanukkah joke. What, what do you recommend for if you're, if you're right there by yourself waking up on Christmas morning? Well, if you feel yourself starting to sink emotionally, again, avoid alcohol, avoid a depressant, uh, avoid waking up the week next week and realizing that you gained five pounds from eating all that food emotionally makes it even worse it makes it worse and what you can do is get out and take a really brisk walk for at least 40 minutes and break a sweat and that will signal your body that these fears and these emotional trauma that you're having are just imaginary and your body will relax you'll suddenly feel good and you'll say well maybe it is a good time to clean my closet Good idea. Thank you for being here. PhD in clinical psychology. How does it feel being on the couch? One, well, <laughs> a little reverse. A little different. Okay. Thank you, <laughs> Thank Dr. You. Molly Barrow. We appreciate your being here. Happy holidays to you. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. Thank we you. We appreciate so that.